Ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to see all of you here talking about very, very important topic. Well, first of all, I would like to congratulate Qatar Foundation for its work to fostering quality education for all. I think it is most important objective if you look at what happens in the world. Education is a key player for well-being for human beings. And I think it is important to talk about the early childhood education and care also by thinking that how much we can improve young uh, kids' lives by the work what we're doing. So therefore I believe that it is important to understand that if we invest one euro for early childhood education and care, we actually can bring seven euros back by these investments. Ladies and gentlemen, so many people wonder how to organize a quality education uh, for our kids. I think Finland has uh, quite a good reputation in education, and I believe that it has been very important to understand that when we talk about the education, we do not talk about only basic school education for kids between 7 and 16 uh, age at our system, but we talk about the whole education chain, which means that when we start already uh, with the kids in the kindergarten age, we actually can prevent so many things which would be, let's say, challenges when the kids are starting their school. So it is important to see that the education chain is not just starting when our children are getting to the school. It is starting a lot earlier already at the age of the, uh, I mean, uh, during the kindergarten age. When we talk about uh, early childhood education and care, we actually talk about promoting uh, children's well-being and equality. We believe that we should talk about a uh, child's overall well-being. And what it is all about. It's about growth. It's about learning. It's about development. It's about health and the basic needs. It's all about safety. And all these can consist such a well-being that we know that our kids are in the good hands. And I also believe that the education, especially at the uh, kindergartens, it is enhancing learning opportunities. And when we get to the quality education then, so many people think still that uh, kindergartens should be just places where we care about our youngsters, our kids, but it's not that much about education. And I think there should be some sort of a balance between the education and the care. But especially, we should talk about uh, early childhood education because it's more telling that we can learn every day, we human beings and especially our kids. And that would be kind of a waste of the time if we adults would be thinking that early childhood education is not for education, it is exactly for education. So, when we talk about education, it is always given by uh, highly uh, regulated uh, services. We believe that we have to regulate uh, these early childhood services in the way that we can make sure that the quality of what we are offering are in the good hands. So, legislation sets out the minimum standards of the quality. And it is important to see that they are related to the access, they're related to the educational goals, uh, also uh, what the staff and the children are supposed to be doing during the early childhood education, uh, staff qualifications, and the forms of the daycare services, and also uh, fees, what kind of fees we can collect. If you look at the access, a lot of people wonder that what is the access to daycare and the primary education. 
I believe that that is the one of the big issues in today's world. If we cannot see that we could educate our kids already before they start the school, then we do not really understand the meaning uh, of education for such a such generation. So I believe, like we Finns believe, that the uh, daycare and pre-primary uh, education is a universal right. It's a universal right, not, not for the parents, but it's a kid's universal right to have such education. And it is a big issue even today in Finland. Because there are always politicians who are thinking that maybe it is right that our kids could stay home when they, they get to be six years old once, when we start the preschool. But I believe that it is important that we have already early childhood education before that. And it is a children's subjective right to be in a childhood um, education already before that. So the question is that are we willing to offer such a right for that generation who even haven't started the school yet? And I believe that it is important to underline the meaning of the universal right. It means that there is a big equality between children. Everybody can have same kind of education and same kind of equal opportunities, which are not related to parents' wishes. They are related to to that generation wishes, that we can make sure that we can provide uh, such a daycare which will uh, make possibilities for that generation to grow. So, and it is important to see that we guarantee, we ensure the equality between the generation. So I believe that it's not related to parents' final position, it's not related to job status of parents, it is not related to the place of the residence of the parents. It is related to that final fact that we should guarantee such a right for all the kids that we can make sure that there are equality uh, between generations, but also between human beings. And we also um, serve our young people by uh, guaranteeing pre-primary education, which is starting at the age of six. So before that, let's say we talk about the early childhood uh, education and care, and then at the age of uh, Six, we talk about the pre-school, uh, and it is important that we make sure that the whole uh, generation is starting the preschool at the same time, because when we talk about the early childhood education, so we cannot insist that our parents would bring all the kids, even though it's a subjective right in Finland, but there are a lot of different uh, circumstances in different families. So before that, uh, it's uh, up to parents' request, but at the age of six, everybody 100% will be in in the coming years. Well, let's talk about the affordability. Well, you know that the Finland is having a free school system from seven-year-old until the, not just for the basic school, but also the upper secondaries, uh, but also for universities and universities of applied sciences, everything free. One of the big uh, challenges to talk about um, money when we are politicians. So there are a lot of people who would think that uh, we can even talk about the high fees in the field of a daycare system. We cannot because we have to admit that there are a lot of families who cannot afford uh, early childhood education. And if it is much more useful for the parents to stay home and take care of the kids, it's not... The losers are the kids who do not get the same kind of uh, education than the other generations. So therefore, it is important to make sure that uh, these uh, customer fees will stay at the reasonable level. And I believe that uh, personally that we should not at all take any fees. But also uh, in the current system, all the families, uh, low-income families, do not pay at all for uh, early childhood education in, in our system. And like I said, pre-primary education is, is for free. Let's talk about the educated stuff. What does it really mean? For our system, it means that we need to have uh, early childhood teachers to teach our kids. It is not just about care. 
but it is about teaching. So therefore, we need to have enough pedagogical skills to make sure that we have a, a lot of, a, or let's say that enough competent areas which are covered uh, during the uh, early childhood education. So it is about the healthcare and social welfare, but it's all about education too. And I would underline the part of the education. So this is important to make sure that our educated staff play a key role in ensuring the quality of services. Well, I believe in the inclusion. A lot of people uh, do not really see that the uh, early childhood education is uh, the place where we can guarantee um, full picture for the generation what it really means to appreciate other kids. So it is about uh, integrating uh, into the mainstream uh, all uh, the people who have a special needs. And it is a big question that inclusion promotes broad-mindedness and tolerance between uh, children. So I, therefore I believe that uh, that even we should meet the needs of the children with the special needs and in the same circumstances with the all other kids. And most likely it is also possible. Well, and finally, but not the least, when we talk about the childhood education, we must be sure that there are some sort of guidelines, some sort of objectives, some sort of a national guidelines, a curricula, which makes sure that we know what happens during those very important years. And I wouldn't like to just underline that we need such uh, uh, guidelines to set the objectives of our kids' generations. But it's all about setting the goals for people who are working with this precious generation. So it is about putting objectives that what kind of a daycare system we are actually offering to our kids. And this is all about setting national steering documents. And it is important. We actually, at the moment, are uh, finalizing our newest uh, documents. And I believe that, that uh, some of the challenges will be gone through when we talk about the curricula. Well, let's talk about the content of the child, early childhood education. I believe that learning is fun. Learning is so fun that our kids are even learning more. So we should teach our kids to learn to learn. And I think the most important tool to do that when we talk about the early childhood education is in fact to make sure that our kids would have enough time to play. When I saw the first uh, version of our curricula, now for uh, our kindergartens, I wanted to make sure that we have enough time to play. Maybe it's because of my earlier job, because we were playing a lot, you know, with the upper secondary school students, can you imagine, at the age of 16 to 19. But I believe that also kids should uh, have a possibility to play enough. And that's about, about uh, making sure that our kids would have enough possibilities to to, to have a sort of a free, not uh, guided uh, uh, possibilities during the day at the early childhood education. So uh, what is the right balance between free play and direct forms of instruction? That is the big question for educators. So what is the, the exactly the right balance? And I believe that uh, that uh, we must make sure that we have enough elements that our kids can learn uh, by playing. And uh, the another question definitely stays uh, in that, that how much care, how much education. We could talk about educare both, but still I believe that the final question comes out by asking how do we believe that in such a holistic uh, manner that, that it is important to make sure that our kids are uh, taken care of but also educated. And how much education it means, it means quite a much education because sometimes we forget that we are learning every single moment. So we actually teach already our kids to be uh, lifelong learners when we make sure that they learn to learn. And there are so many 
issue is what we can teach to our kids. And I don't think that it's about the content that much, that how much we must make sure that they have already uh, possibilities to learn uh, basics of some of the subjects we're going to teach in the school. I believe that we should more teach our kids to make sure that they can have enough uh, uh, sensibility to understand other people's feelings and also that they could understand that they can cope in the world. You know, that our kids would understand that it would be really great that they all would have a meaning of their lives even though, you know, they can be five-year-old ones, but they would have a really strong feeling, you know, that I'm needed, I'm important person. There is someone who is waiting me to be part of the community. And it is important to teach these young kids that they can have a meaning of their lives, and it is important, purpose of their lives. And finally, I think there is a third component. It would be really important to underline that during the childhood education, we must make sure that our kids uh, can grow to be part of the community. You know, education is not just the individual project, even though we want to carry on with everyone's skills. But in fact, I believe that it is also a community project, that we make sure that our uh, kids can be part of the society. They, they uh, understand how it is to run things together as a community. And therefore, finally, I think it is important to ask our kids that what do they think about and we did that. We actually did that in the Finnish society. We asked when we were making uh, early childhood reform, we were asking our youngsters that what they were thinking about early childhood education. And what, wonder or not, three, four, five-year-old ones can answer these questions. They took uh, photos which were important for early childhood education in their opinion. And it was an amazing thing that our kids underlined that the, that the games and playing is really important and then to, play, to be with the others. And I think it is all what I've been talking here now. So it is important to make sure that uh, children's opinions matter. They can choose even when they are five-year-old ones what kind of uh, uh, environment they want to leave, what kind of color they have, walls and so on. So easy, simple questions but also skills to be part of the community. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to finish my speech just by concluding that it is important to make sure that uh, there is a right balance when we talk about education and care. It is important to make sure that our kids can learn to learn and it's more like to make sure that they can play because playing is also learning. And I also believe that there are a lot of other uh, questions uh, coming up when we talk about the well-being. Well-being and health of our children can be achieved already uh, during the first years of, of our kids' lives. And therefore, kindergartens uh, are the places where we have to have uh, these objectives already uh, done and measured. So in that sort of sense, I think it is important to make sure that we have enough understanding. Uh, that uh, education in uh, early childhood education is, is the number one thing. And finally, it is cost-effective way to make sure that the new generation will feel good. And that's the, actually the only heritage which we can leave for the new generation, that we make sure that they are having the best education in the world. This is not all about just the money or houses or cars to make sure that they will cope. It's all about the education. And I would like to think that all adults would think that it is a heritage to make sure that our kids will have the best available education because then they have all the skills what they need in their lives. And if we can make sure it, we can be always proud to look at their eyes and say, when we were controlling these things, we wanted to make sure that you would have best skills in your lives that you would cope. And this is all about when we talk about the early childhood education. Thank you.